Welcome to today's Reminder of God. I think you guys know about our dog. Sassy Sassy Pretty Lassie is our golden retriever and pretty much Glenda's Velcro dog, which means she pretty much sticks to Glenda wherever she goes. Chaucer Chaucer Puppy Bosser is our English setter. Typically, he sticks to me like glue. He always is in the same room I'm in. But then there was Monday morning. Monday morning, our pastoral team comes over to my house for coffee, fellowship, and prayer. And well, Carolyn, one of Chaucer's very, very best friends, hadn't been able to make it for a couple of weeks, something like a wedding or something like that getting in the way. Excusable. But you know, Chaucer hadn't seen her in a couple of weeks. Well, she comes in and Chaucer is beside himself. I mean, he is by far the most vocal dog that we have ever had. But Monday morning, I kid you not, he was on the verge of speech. He was so excited to see his friend again. And then there was this morning. I needed at about seven o'clock this morning to head down to the cor corner TNA, which is a uh, market. And I started pulling on my shorts and Chaucer went absolutely nuts. Now, frankly, I'm usually in my robe until I shower, so Chaucer knew that if I'm putting on my shorts before I shower, that means I'm getting ready to leave the house. Now, his vocal doggy supplications for me to stay filled the entire room. I'm sure they filled the yard as well. That, and then as I'm trying to get ready, what does he do? He stands on my sandals to keep me from putting my feet in them. And as I finally get my sandals on, he then runs to the front door and blocks the front door to try to keep me from leaving. Though I always intend to return, Chaucer hates it when I leave. Fortunately, we don't have that problem with God. No, he has promised to never leave us or forsake us. But we even have more, Matthew 28. 18 through 20. We usually see this as the Great Commission. It is, but we can get, uh, we can glean a little bit more there. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you you always, even unto the end of the age. Now, my friends, we tend to think in three dimensions, don't we? You know, up, down, back, forth, you know, basically three-dimensional lives. And we are told again and again in scripture that wherever we are on earth, whether that's in the very depths, at the very heights, God is with their, is with us where we are. But here we see that God's presence with us transcends place. Did you guys catch that? And lo, I am with you always. It doesn't say even unto the end of the earth. It says even unto the end of the age. The presence of God, of his love for us transcends then place. It includes time as well. The presence of God, his love for us then, is not just with us wherever we go, but whenever we go. Now, of course, there is kind of an implied assumption here. There, we are actually going out, isn't there? But in doing so, his presence, his love, will be there in perpetuity and I don't have to sit on his sandals or block the front door to make that happen. Grace, peace, and love to you, and to God be the glory.